Today we're cooking up a monster porterhouse steak by reverse searing it and then blasting it over an open fire. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any cooks. Hit the like button if, uh, if this is something that you would make for yourself and comment with uh, what you think of this cook and what I should be cooking next. Like I said, today we're gonna be cooking a T-bone steak, talking about uh, porterhouse style. And so uh, to start off, what I wanna do is uh, actually talk a little bit about what that means. And T-bone steaks, you know, that's the traditional shape. And you know, I'm just gonna show it to you right now. Obviously, you got the um, the New York strip as well as a filet mignon. Now, a lot of times, though, with a uh, with a T-bone, you're going to see a really puny filet mignon. It's going to be mainly strip. And so, with a porterhouse, you get big portions of each. So, it's one of my favorite things to make when I'm cooking for two. So, you see how big the steak is? Really thick cut, big old New York strip, big old filet. It's going to come out really fantastic. What we're going to do is we're going to cook this thing indirect. So, I'm talking maybe 275, 300 degrees, and we're gonna cook and bring that temperature up. And that's one of the things that I do to really ensure properly cooked beef and uh, make sure it's like nice and even all the way throughout. And then at the very end, we're gonna sear it over a raging hot fire. Uh, but to start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit of a neutral oil on it. I'm talking about avocado oil. This is actually a spray canister, which is kind of nifty. And then I'm gonna hit this with uh, some Heath Rouse beef. So I haven't tried this yet, but uh, I'm excited about it. And I think it's gonna come out pretty well. It's gonna be really good on the steak. So let's get the steak oiled up and seasoned. Okay, hit this with a little oil, just so uh, that rub sticks. And then, like I said, we're gonna pop this with a little bit of Heath Rouse beef rub. Pretty, nice color, I like that. Look at that beautiful steak there. That seasoning is already starting to bring some of that moisture out. That's looking beautiful. I'm gonna put this uh, this side down and we're gonna hit the other side. So actually, I got the grill set up here. I wanna explain this. Got um, the, the grill position in the lower setting on this right-hand side, and then I got indirect on the upward side over here. So like I said, we're gonna be cooking indirect to start. A Little more spray. A Little more rub. Oh man, that seasoning hitting that uh, that heat deflector plate it just kind of erupts with uh, with a really good flavor looks awesome this is going to stay like this i might come out and flip it uh, in a little bit but basically we're going to try to bring this up to about five degrees south of where we want to end up and then we're going to hit it over the fire really hot and fast so stick around we'll be right back okay so it's been 35 minutes now 300 degrees we're going to check the temperature across uh, the uh the strip part as well as the filet and see when we need to start um, you know gearing up and get this fire raging so what we're going to do is we're going to pop it open here and it's looking really nice you can see the uh, the seasoning has kind of like absorbed into the meat and so i got my thermal pin here stick it right down there in the middle we're looking 106 in the strip 118 in the filet, 125 closer to the edge there. So we're getting pretty close here. What I think I'm gonna do is maybe leave this on for about five minutes or so, and then uh, we're gonna pull this off and then just open the vents up, just crank that temperature up, and then we're gonna be cooking it over this, uh, this direct side here. Okay, team, I just took the temp on this and it's looking pretty good here. Uh, Thermo pins tell me 119 in the, um, in the strip, and then the filet is cooking a little bit quicker about 127 or so in the filet. So that's looking really good. So what I just did, I came on out here and um, opened the bottom vent the entire way, and we're gonna leave this open. So if you wanna come on over here and take a look, you can see what's going on like already. The, uh, the fire here with that additional airflow, you can just see that starting to really ignite here. This has probably been open for two minutes and you can see the coals just really starting to get some good flames here. So I got my heat deflector gloves here. That's why I'm able to do this. But um, at this point, what we're gonna do, give this a few more minutes, let this come up to a real hot raging fire. And then we're gonna put this steak on there, sear it for maybe a minute or so each side. Uh, maybe try to like crisp up some of that fat and uh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be ready to roll. So we're gonna let this come on up for another minute or so. Okay, it's been about three minutes or so. We've got this nice raging fire and I'm just gonna put this steak on directly by hand beautiful and i like to move the steak around a lot because uh you know if i start seeing some flare-ups i'm going to like shift it around a little bit so i can avoid some of the uh some of the dark marks there but right now we're just looking to get this crust on and i'm going to try to render this fat down so we're going to leave this here for just a minute or so and uh and yeah it's going to be it's going to be something special here look at that just in a couple seconds here 
That's looking nice. Put it back down. I'm not really going for grill marks. I just like the char all over. It's feeling good. The fillet is cooking a little bit quicker, so if I can, I'm going to try to uh, put a little more action on the strip. Nice. Let's see if we can get some of that uh, that fat. See that? Looking good. We're just gonna hold it up like that. Looking nice and bubbly. Oh man, look at that. That's good. That's what I'm looking for. So temp check. What do you say? All right, 124, 141, another couple minutes, a couple moments really. This goes quick. Beautiful. Nice grill marks there. I wasn't trying to get grill marks, but I did. Oh, look at that. Come on, man. I'm pulling this thing off. We're going to let this sit for a minute. Now that's beautiful. That is a beautiful steak here. Folks, I'm real happy with this. Look how that came out. Really nice, good color all around. Got that fat, nice and caramelized. Great filet, just falling apart. You can see the, uh, the intermuscular fat of the filet. It's starting to separate on its own, which is great. That's gonna be a really good piece. And so at this point, you could do a couple different things here. You could you know, serve this on a plate if it's for one and just go to town. I'm gonna cut it up though and slice into it though. All right, let's carve off the filet to start. Ooh, yeah. Feeling good? Beautiful, nice filet. And then, let's see, how do I want to tackle this here? Cut that filet off as close to the bone as you can. Almost. There we go, we got it. Oh. See, how well does that present? All right, well, let's give a cut into the, uh, the strip one to start. Nice and juicy. It's gonna be more done towards the end. It's one of the nice things about the strip is that if you're serving multiple people, people who like in pieces, they can have theirs done a little bit more. A little bit more rare towards the middle. But it's looking really good here. Let's slice into this filet here. That is falling apart, man. Ah, oh, that's gonna be really good. Only thing that would do is uh, get a little bite. What do you say? I'm real happy with this. This looks fantastic. The uh, the strip side is my side, so I'm gonna get a little bite here. We got a little juice running over on the back here. Let's get a bite. Hmm. That is hard to beat, man. Something about cooking a porterhouse like this, where it's connected to the bone. If you were to go to a fancy steakhouse and get a bone in anything, whether it's a, a bone in um, strip, I think they call it a Kansas City strip, or a bone in filet, they're gonna charge you like 25% more because that bone gives so much flavor. And you get both steaks here, both connected to that bone. That is really good. That is, that's above and beyond what you're gonna get if you just cook these up individually. Don't get me wrong, a strip on its own, great. Filet, always amazing. But having that bone connected to it just imparts some flavor that's just really hard to uh, to describe. Very beefy. This Heath Riles beef rub is really good. It was a little spicy when I uh, was smelling it earlier on the grill. It had a little kick to it, but it's really mellowed out here. Uh, now it's actually cooked in. We've uh, seared over the fire. 
So I'm definitely going to be using that. I might want to do like a brisket or a chuck roast or something with that. Uh, or beef ribs. I think beef ribs is coming up too. But uh, I'm really impressed with this. And I really like it. You definitely got to give it a try. This was at my Publix. You know, usually I don't find big porterhouses, like I said before. A T-bone, you'll see those, but it's like that small filet. It's not, and it's thinner too. But this big, probably inch and a half porterhouse was there this week, and I just had to dive in on it. Um, but you know what? It's time to eat here. What we're going to do is we're going to get away, fly. Um, get this inside so we can dive in but as always thank you so much for joining and for uh for sticking with us through this cook if you like this video hit that like button if you're not subscribed do subscribe and comment with what you're going to be cooking this weekend what i should be cooking and as always you know this is kamado max and thanks so much for uh for all the, the nice comments and whatnot and uh we'll see you next week